Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day and today's problem is number of laser beams in a bank and it is a medium rate problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given certain arrays and each array can have a beam at a particular position. So it has a security device. It can have this particular security device at certain positions in each of the rows. Right. Now, as you can see, there are certain lines for connecting one beam to the another beam or one security device to the another security device. Our final task is to find the total number of lines that are present in this particular final configuration or the number of connections that we have. Right. Now, uh, how do we actually solve this problem? Let us dive a little deeper into what the problem is saying. So, I am just going to take a quick screenshot of this particular part to explain you. So, let us say we have this. Right. Now, what you can see here is we have the beam. Right. So, at this particular level, at this particular level, all the beams are connected to every beam at the next level. Right. So, the question originally mentioned, I have not read it out, but it mentions if you read it carefully that the beams at each level are going to get connected to the beams at the just next level. So, what do I mean by the just next level? The just next level means the next level at, v, at, which, at which beams are actually present. So, as you can see at this particular level, there are no beams, right? So, they, it cannot connect to any of the security device here. But in the level after it or in the row after it, there are actually two beams. So, now the devices at this particular level can actually connect to them, right? So, our question is this only that at each row, the security devices are going to connect to the uh, security devices which are present at any row just after it, right? So, that means this particular device cannot connect to this particular device, right? This is not possible at all. So, what we have to do is we have to somehow maintain how many devices uh, were present at its previous level. Once we are able to find it, you can see it is not very difficult to understand what will be the answer because if there are three, three devices at this particular level and there were two devices at this particular level, the answer is going to be simply 3 into 2 that is 6 for the connection between these two levels, this level and this level, right. And again for this particular level there is one device here and there are two devices here. So, the answer is going to be uh, 2 into 1 and that is going to be 2 itself and the total answer is going to be 6 plus 2 that is 8 in this particular case and this is actually the final answer, right. So, how do we actually calculate these uh, devices? So, what we are going to do is we are going to go simply from downward direction to the upward direction making a reverse for loop. We are going to count, we are going to maintain two things. The first thing is how many devices were there in the next row. Next row means the row that is that was after it, any row which had any, any number of devices, right. Once we have this, we are just going to go through the current row, right. For each device that we encounter like this one and this one, we are going to do two things. The first thing is going, we are going to do is we are going to increment some count variable, right. We are going to increment some count variable and the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add these, this particular next value to our answer, this particular next value to our answer. So, next was basically how many elements were there in the next row, right. So, for each device that we encounter in the current row, for each device that we encounter here in the current row, we are going to increment our answer by next. Why? Because this is similar to doing 3 into 2. Instead of doing 3 into 2, what we are doing is for this particular value or this particular device, we add 2 and then for this particular device, we add 2 and then for this particular device, we add 2. Right. So, this is similar to doing that. Now, once we have figured out all of these answers, what we are going to do is, let us say for the current row, we have incremented the answer, we have incremented the count. Now, only if count is greater than 0, if count is greater than 0, we are going to update our next as count. So, you see why this condition is important. Consider the example of this particular row. Let us say we are evaluating this particular row. We know that the current value of next is 2. The current value of next is 2. Why? Because there are simply two elements or two devices present here, right. So, at this particular row, there are no current elements or no devices. So, our current count will be 0, right. And the next value is 2. In this particular case, you will see that no devices here can connect to these two elements, right. But these devices, these devices should be able to connect to these particular elements. So, that clearly means that the value of next 
next at this particular level should be equal to 2 and here we should not update the value of next to be 0 right so that is why this condition is very important that only if the value of count is greater than 0 we are going to update our next value right so these are the only two things that you have to do in this particular problem and uh, let me show you the code and then it will be much more clear so what i have done is i've initialized two variables answer and next and i'm just uh, making a reverse for loop from the last row to the zeroth row now i have initialized my new variable to be next so basically this is the count of the number of ones in the current row right so i'm just going to traverse to the current uh, string of the current row and if j is equals to 1 i'm going to increment my answer by the value of next and i'm going to increment the value of to be next and i'm update i'm going to update the value of next to be as if to be next is greater than 0 i am going to keep it as to be next otherwise i am keep i am going to keep it as next only i am not going to update it right so this is the thing i was talking about you could have also written an if condition if you want it like that, if you want it like that and that would be also correct right so at the end i can just return my answer and this would be my final solution so let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct so you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys said, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.